Hey guys, welcome back to this week's episode of Testify. Mm -hmm. This week, Sunia and I are going to be talking about our purpose here on this earth as believers. Mm -hmm. And we're coming from Matthew 5, verse 14 to 16. And it says, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Mm -hmm. And the title of what you was just reading is called Lamp on a Stand. Mm -hmm. And for me, even though that's the title, I wanted, I, I, after reading this, I basically thought that this is our identity. This is. is who we are. Yeah. And this is how we get to know our identity. And this is what Jesus had to say about this. This is what we're commanded to do. Mm -hmm. and, and not only can you find this in Matthew 5, but also in Mark and Luke. Mm -hmm. And when you study it, and these, these are the syn synoptic gospels, and when you study it using all of these, you actually get to see the different perspective from each person. Because, yeah. And so if Trine and I were to go to an event, Trine would probably see something I wouldn't see or, and vice versa. So that is the purpose of these different gospels. Mm -hmm. So one thing, what Mark would have, Luke may not. Luke may have something and Mark would not and what's not. So that's what I wanted to really draw to your attention. So when you're studying these gospels, when you see one missing from the other, um, it's important to know that one person may pay closer attention to detail than the other. Mm -hmm. And so jumping right into this, I just want to identify the different characters in, in this. Mm -hmm. um, so the light, uh, so you can see this as a metaphor or the literal meaning of this pertaining to this verse. So the light could mean the fire, the lamp, the stars, and this means like anything that emits light. Mm -hmm. And the metaphor would be like the truths, like our understanding or spiritual purity or to expose something, you know, like when somebody say, I'm going to put like light on that, um, to, to basically bring something to light. And in this, it actually says that as well, whatever is hidden, would actually come out in the open mm -hmm. and the basket could represent a variety of things mm -hmm. it could represent fear intimidation ignorance selfishness anything mm -hmm. so anything that would cover up your light and before i move on in this particular verse it was actually talking about the light um, being like a candle in some versions um, and it's something portable. So you see like how God said, like, let your light so shine. And he sent us into all the world mm -hmm. to carry the gospel. So it's important to know that this light is something that we take everywhere. You know, something that I, you know, that the Holy Spirit just put on my heart, because I mentioned earlier when we started that, you know, this is something that we're commanded to do. We're commanded to be the light. But God doesn't, you know, he's, he, he isn't actually commanding us. He's telling us that this is who we are. Like, this is, That's this is your said. identity. Like, yes. So, so it's not, it's like... He's not saying, for example, like you, um, you're a teacher. Mm -hmm. He's not saying, I'm commanding you to be a teacher. Go forth and be a teacher. Mm -hmm. He's saying you are, this is who you this are. Who I am. Like you are a light your now. When you, when you decide to put your trust in, in God and not, not just your trust in God, but when you, when you accept, accept Jesus as Lord and Savior in your life and when you, when you've been made new, when you've been born again, you have a new identity. Yes. And this is your, this is who you are. Yes. Because like it says you are the light of the world, period. Yes. Not, hey, can you please go and be the light of the world? Can yes. you please? No, you're now light. And yes. you know how, so he's just basically saying now how a light operates and you know, this this is what you got to do. And Trine, I am telling you, I know it's the Holy Spirit because this is the same thing that God put on my heart that we don't actually have to try to be the light. You don't have to try to be patient. When you become born again, you are these you things. You are those things. Yeah. And yeah. so that was something that the Holy Spirit really spoke out to me. So I know for sure this is for someone out there. Yeah. This is for you. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, one thing I want to talk about too is the purpose of the light. Um, before we really get into it, the purpose of the light. And so, um, like we mentioned before, um, it's a, it emits like its surroundings and what's not. And so, like, when you turn on the light in a dark place, it, it, it helps you and it guides you into um, a specific way. Yeah. Um, if, you, if you were to turn off this light right now, um, yeah, I could see right now, but if I turn off this light, I could probably hit my foot on something and stumble over something or hit, into, or hit a wall, but mm -hmm. the light is used <laughs> to help me to go and navigate throughout the world. Right. And it says this inside John, 9, John 11, 9 through 10. Jesus said, 
Jesus said this, are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, but because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the, the light is not in him. Mm -hmm. And so that is a, a an example. Another example would be Isaiah 50. 59 and 10 it says we grope for the walls like the blind and we grope as if we have no eyes we stumble at noonday as in the night we are desolate we are in desolate places as dead men and that's something i want to note um when um when you're like before you meet christ you tend to live by how you feel mm -hmm. that's because and in that same sense it's like you don't have the light so you're just living and just off of these different feelings because you cannot see anything but Jesus Christ being the light gave us this light and now we are able to see and discern the different things that are happening around us we aren't in the dark and we can see what Jesus Christ is doing and you know something something that I that I thought about you know as we're doing this study is that he made us light because he is light mm -hmm. and not only in a not only in a metaphorical sense mm -hmm. if yeah. that makes sense like mm -hmm. not 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 just like that but he is like actually physically light mm -hmm. you know even when you when you look at his appearance um for example during his transfiguration when jesus was transfigured on the mountain um it talks about how his face sh sh shined like the sun mm -hmm. and you know like you cannot even look directly at the sun like you would literally go blind mm -hmm. if you stare at the sun too long you know how bright and how il illuminating it is mm -hmm. and even some accounts, some some persons who have, who who have seen Jesus. Some people who have had experiences where they, you know, where they may have went to heaven. In all of the, those accounts that I, you know, that I would come across, they always describe where they can they cannot see his face because it shines so bright. And I just wanted to say that that's actually physically who he is. Like mm -hmm. Jesus is a Jesus is literally light. Like he's literally and light. so he made us to be that. You know, he made us to be that way. Mm -hmm. And that is so true. And one one of the one one of the greatest revelations when I first came to Christ is when I was reading the book of Genesis and the Bible actually talked and said that there was light. Mm -hmm. But then when you read further down, um the Bible talks about then the sun being made. So I was like wait, how was there light before the sun came there? Mm -hmm. And then I found the answer in Revelation where Jesus says, um, after the earth has passed away, Jesus said that he would be our light. So Jesus Christ literally is the light. Mm -hmm. And like you mentioned before, when we become born again, according to um, John 12, 36, it says, it says, while you have the light, believe the light so that you may become sons of the light. And so that is how we become sons of the light, when we actually believe, believe. in Jesus Christ. Because if, if he tells you that you are something and you don't believe it, it's impossible for you to act like what you are, mm -hmm. you know? So. Yeah. And, and another way, like, we really take on, like, this... This light is the Bible says that the the word of God is the lamp unto my feet and the I light. Talk about that. Okay, no, wait. that's fine. Go no, ahead. you go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Okay, so when it talks about that, I I basically see it as um, the gospel, like Jesus giving us this light, and mm -hmm. we have the opportunity to to take it and to just light up everywhere we go. You know, there are so many so many examples in the Bible, you know, that points to Jesus Christ being the light, because even last week in our episode, we talked about how the lamps, the, our hearts represent, sorry, the lamp represented our hearts and the oil represented the Holy Spirit and the two together made light. And, you know, we talked about how God is a consuming fire. And so, you know, like there's so many examples of, of, of his identity. And so, you, you know, like for me, like you wonder why, why am I light? Why, why I got to go out there and be a light? Mm -hmm. Like why I got to be so like that's automatic. As soon as you, you've been made new, you are, you are, you are like Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He made you like him. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, a verse that would really go hand in hand with that is where Jesus says, I am the light of the world and whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And that is John 8 and 12. Mm -hmm. And because we are born after Jesus, it actually says inside that verse that we are the light of the world and yeah. we are the light of the world because he is the light of the world. We are like Jesus. Yeah. That is why um, it, is, it is the way it is. And you know, and this, this debunks that whole theory that we can't be like Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, some people think that Jesus is just this perfect being that we cannot be like or, you know, we could strive to be like him, but we won't 
ever quite get there but that's that's not true he literally made us like him mm -hmm. he says that we are the light he is light and, and we are also light mm -hmm. and so he expects us to act like what we are like why are you acting like something that you're not mm -hmm. you know and even with that being said like how it says like Jesus, we have the light of life. That's not only talking about eternal life, but that's also talking about this life. And for me, that really stood out for me. So not only, like I said, we have the life um, eternally, but this life we are able to see um, and have a hope in the future. We have, we could see the, the, I guess, the silver lining around the clouds. The light at the end of the tunnel is yeah. the word of God. So even when everything around us looks dark, it's the word of God that gives us a way to go through this natural life right now so it helps us in every single area and that that is one of the things that i learned um through this study and you know something that i really would like to touch touch on is you know you talked about when, you know when you had mentioned the basket and what those things could rep could represent like fair and, and all the other uh, things that you mentioned mm -hmm. um we should touch on that for them because you mm -hmm. know if we if we are our if we are light mm -hmm. there are things in and of this world that could stop our light from shining mm -hmm. so yeah so with that being said um i mentioned it before it could be fear it could be intimidation it could be unbelief it could be doubt it could be ignorance mm -hmm. timidity anything anything that you decide um or anything that you want to put over your light so peter um when he denied jesus he put um a basket over his um his light and i also want to mention this um from exodus 34 and 30 uh maybe you may have the you may care about what other people may may think and this was moses after he spent so much time with god and it says so aaron and all the sons of israel saw moses behold his his face shone meaning like his face was like radiant because mm -hmm. he was in the presence of god mm -hmm. like there was literally like light coming off of him mm -hmm. and it says they were afraid to come near him and in order for moses to be around him he actually had to cover up his face and we may be tempted to do that based based upon what other people may think about us maybe i'm not going to sp um, spread the gospel because they're not going to want to hang out with me they're not going to want to be my friend or anything along those lines they may not accept me and that is how persons can actually put a basket over on the their or over their over their light because regardless you are a light like yeah <laughs> you, you're going to be a light whether you put the basket over it or not like mm -hmm. you're, you're still the light is still going to be there and so you know it's just up to us to make sure that we are shining without having you know a basket or a covering mm -hmm. over who we truly are because when you you know like when we you know like how we mentioned earlier when you've been born again you this this is your this is your new identity. identity that's who you are and not only that the the funny thing about it is it literally says that you are a city on a hill that cannot be hidden yeah you cannot there's yeah. absolutely no way you know it, you it, it, it just reminds me of like for example like you know the transgender community like people who for example women who you know they do everything surgery you know voice changing mm -hmm. um all oh, these things mm -hmm. to become a guy or and vice versa mm -hmm. um guys who do the same thing to, to say that they're going to become a woman mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what you do. That's what you are. Is who that's who you are. You are a man. If you've been born a man, you are a man. If you've been born a female, you are a female. There's nothing that you can do to change that. Mm -hmm. And so it's the same way. Like that's your set identity. Your identity. If that's not gonna change. Mm -hmm. And in the same way, like that's that's who we are when we are when when God says that we are light. Like that's who you are now. So nothing that you do to try to cover that up. You know that it's not gonna work. Like you are now light. Mm -hmm. So. Yep. Uh, another one I want to talk about is um, we do good works as a result of being sons of the light. So like we mentioned before, you don't have to try to do these things automatically um, because we have a new nature. We want to do good works. We want to love people. And that obviously comes from God. And we recognize that because before with your enemies, you might have not even cared about them. You mm -hmm. you might not even give like n you not even care a about them. Thought, yeah. uh, give a second thought about them. But because of Jesus Christ, he gave you a new heart. You are able to do good works. And uh, a, a very great example of this um, and who we pattern after it says this in James 1 and 17. Every good and perfect gift is from ab above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, 
who does not change like shifting shadows mm -hmm. and with that being said i i see that as because god is good not that we are good in and of ourselves but because god is good that allows us to do good works because mm -hmm. he is good and he is the light and we are light as well mm -hmm. and like i mentioned before because we have, we were given new hearts and yeah. we are born again we are able to live for god and it says this and that's something oh that's, sorry no um no, you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say that that's something that God actually gave us in his covenant. Mm -hmm. Like God literally, literally promised to us like mm -hmm. by like legally mm -hmm. that he wrote his law on our hearts. Mm -hmm. that we, so we are exactly what he says we are. Like if he says that you've been made new, if he says that you are a light, like he did that because he had to. Like mm -hmm. that was a covenant that he set before us. Mm -hmm. And you can find that in Ezekiel 36 and 27. Mm -hmm. I'm referring to us having the new heart. But another thing I wanted to talk about was how God actually set aside good works for us to do. Mm -hmm. And it says, we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good work, which God prepared in advance for us to do so this is another reason why we do good works because god had these planned for us to do and because he this is almost like a commandment of us but it's automatic it's automatic once you are born again you will do good works yeah. there's the god changes your nature yeah. he changes um you from being i guess sassy or bossy or impatient whatever, to, to yeah. whatever the the opposite is you become what he says that you are and i think that that's so important to know because there are so many persons who desire to have a relationship with god but there's you know I've, i i always hear all the time oh i'm not ready or I know that if I give my life to God, I'm going to struggle with this, that, and the next, not knowing that God is going to completely change your nature, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, and that's so true. And that is a lot of, uh, that is actually a stumbling block to yeah. a lot. And It's a it, lie, really. It's it is a lie. And um, because when we look at our lives and even the, some of the things that we thought that we, well, I didn't really think that I would struggle with something, but even just looking back at my life, the things that I used to indulge with or the things that I used to tolerate, the Holy Spirit completely changed me. It's nothing that I can say, like I can boast about and brag about. I, it's something only the work of the Holy Spirit could do because yeah. we know who we were at first and God completely changes you. You know, I mean, we're going to do an uh, episode on this, you know, an episode on faith, but it's, you know, the, the, the word of God says that the just shall live by faith. Mm -hmm. So when we're just and when we're righteous because of Christ, we don't live off of our own works and our own abilities to please God. Like we literally only live by faith. And that's so simple and easy to do once you grasp how, you know, what that truly means. It, it, you don't have to try to do or be anything. You are exactly who God created you to be. And you just, by faith, you believe that that's who you are. Mm -hmm. And you just, you just act accordingly, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it takes faith to believe that you are now light mm -hmm. because you're light regardless. You know, when, when God transforms you, you, you are light. And so the only thing, you know, that's stopping you really is not having faith that you are now light. So you just have to know and you have to believe and you have to have faith that you are now light. And, and you can shine and you have the ability to shine. You don't have to worry about your past, past mistakes, um, even your own characteristics, things that you know are, you know, not 100% there. Like you said, you mentioned like sassiness, impatience. Like you don't have to, to worry about any of that. You just live by faith. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, that leads me into a, a really great point. Um, as the reasons why you, we were talking earlier, why people would mainly be afraid to come into God because they, they feel like they wouldn't change or anything like that. Or maybe because um, another reason they may even like that lifestyle. True. And in in the latter part of what we were talking about, it actually talks about how whatever is hidden, God would actually reveal it. And it says this in John three nineteen. It says, and the light. It says the light has come into the world, and people loved the darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And maybe um, some people they may not want to come to the light, maybe because they're afraid mm -hmm. um, that they'll be exposed for everything that they do. But um, I know I don't. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Kiki Palmer or anything, but she would be like. But the gag is God is literally going to reveal everything on the day of judgment, <laughs> the gag. Uh, and and He could literally see you right now. Yeah. So you might as well just come out and be like God. 
these are the things that I did. Yeah. And he actually wants you to I do mean, that. Because of the, the truth of the matter is he sees them anything. He, he sees them regardless. if you want to hide it. Like, he still sees, you know. Yeah. So. so, you might as well just come out right now before the day of judgment. Um, before you meet God, you know, while you could repent. Though, Tania, for someone in the world, that may not be the easiest thing to do because even like now as we're talking about it, I remember when I was in a backslidden state and I would just refuse to do anything related to God because I was just so embarrassed. And, you know, now now I know better, you know, but the truth of the matter is like, it's like common sense, like Trinity, God sees you anyway. You mm -hmm. may as well just bring this to him. And so I would avoid everything relating to God, church, Bible study, like, I was like ghost MIA, like I was just completely missing because I just didn't want, you know, I don't. I, I would feel guilty about if I wanted to read the Bible, I would feel guilty about praying, I would, you know, and, and I just want to mention that that's, that's a device of, of the, the enemy. enemy condemnation. Know. It's condemnation, that's exactly mm -hmm. what it is because God sees it anyway and, you know, if you don't deal with it now, it's going to be dealt with at some point in time, mm -hmm. you know, and you don't want it to be and on the day of judgment, like you say, like when, you know, his light is going to reveal everything. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, one, a great revelation that God was actually talking to me about the verse that says, um, God is near and there to those who have um, a broken heart and a contrite spirit. Yeah. And what, when it talks about a broken heart, it means your heart is broken um, or you feel sorrowful about sin. Not mm -hmm. that like something drastic happened to you. And that is actually a good thing when you, because it's not normal for us to um feel bad when we sin I'm, and i'm saying this because of our evil and sinful nature, nature yeah. it says that um all of us have turned away from god and all of us have sinned so it's god who puts that desire in you but it's the devil that tells you you're not worthy you're not good enough and makes you feel like i said guilty and you shouldn't go to church or anything like that so it's actually a good thing when or you even, feel sorrowful for your sin or I'm, even the devil who could make you feel you know so mm -hmm. much pride to where you think you know you're right mm -hmm. in your sin you have every right to do what you're doing yeah you have every right to do what you're doing but uh, in reality you don't and so but but when you even feel that way, when you feel, uh, I guess, a little bit of conviction mm -hmm. from God, that is an indication that God is calling you and he wants you. It's not something that you should actually run away from because yeah. God is taking off those things, the scales off your eyes and letting you know, hey, that this isn't something right. This isn't righteous. This is yeah. what, what I would want you to do. Mm -hmm. And he is calling you to himself. So your response would be to come to him and he will do the work. He, When you repent, he will cleanse you from um, every sin that you've ever committed and he is going to forget about it so if you're watching this video and you want to give your life to God but you don't know how you think you've done too much wrong but you feel like you want to do it today is the opportunity to do so you could give your life to God God is near to you right now just surrender. just surrender to him just ask him for forgiveness and you, you may not say it perfectly but God knows God knows your heart he knows exactly what you're meaning yeah you know, um, you know, I just want to close with the fact that we are light. You know, that is who we are now. And we have a work to do. We have we have places to light up. You know, there are a lot of dark places in the earth and we we and we are light. And, and so it's our duty to go, you know, and to spread the gospel, to show the same love that God shows for us to, you know, forgive others and, and to give and to be a part of God's kingdom here on earth because his kingdom is here. His kingdom is here, you know, and we talked, you know, we talked a, a little bit about it in the prayer last, last episode, but um, God's kingdom is here now. Like we don't have to wait until we die. We don't have to wait until we get to heaven to experience God's kingdom, but it's here now. And we have a work to do while we are here and while we are part of his kingdom. Mm -hmm. And you know, there are a lot of persons living in darkness and that's why God created us as light because he knows that we are needed. We're the vessels that, that are needed to go and light up you know, light up the world and to take people out of darkness. So mm -hmm. I just want to leave you with that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have any closing marks. Nope, you kind of wrapped up everything. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Tanisha is going to close us out in prayer. Thank you, I will. Okay, so heads by and eyes closed. To Heavenly Father, thank you so much, God, for this episode. God, I pray that whoever God is um, wanting to give their life to you right now, God, that they would do so right now. Father God, I pray that they would surrender themselves over to you. Thank you, God, for speaking, God, to this audience today, God. Thank you, God, that your word has been planted into their hearts and they've heard the gospel today, Jesus. Thank you so much, God, for everything that you do and continue to do, God. And we pray all these things in your name, God. Amen. Amen.
And so guys, before we leave, you know, we have to invite you out. We have prayer meetings and Bible study every Wednesday, every Monday and Wednesday at 7 p.m. We also have church services every Sunday at 10 a.m. So if you're looking for a church, a, a church home, you know, that's filled with the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. where you can come and love and fellowship with other believers, mm -hmm. you're welcome to join us. Yep. Do send us a message here on this page and we'll let you know how you can join us. Mm -hmm. But thank you so much for watching this week and we will see you next week on Testify. Okay, bye.